Okay. Well, tonight we're gonna be in for a special treat. You get to wave at me tonight. See? And and my pink bubblegum office that should really be purple. Kelly, we are not building snowmen tonight. I melted Olaf. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so I'm going to, you know, you get to see me now. So I'm, I'm going to wave and we're going to turn off my video and go back to my PowerPoint. So did everybody have a great week? Oh, Kelly, I know what your issues are, so I'm just going to take that in stride. Good, Tamisha, I'm glad. Good, Anthony. So last week, we covered system preferences. Oh, Eric, I'm sorry to hear that you've been sick. It's, it's horrible. Oh, Kelly, we'll, we'll get you straightened out on Illustrator eventually. I'm glad you're feeling better. And Tamara, you hopefully feel better too. And no spreading that virus over the computer. I've already had to clean two Trojans off my Macs today. Minor problems, minor problems. So last week we went over system preferences and iTunes and why it was so much fun and important to have an account. We went over how to set up right click and some of the other system preferences. And just for you guys, I still have my system preferences up. Um, has anybody taken a look at mission control to see what it does? Yeah, Kelly says yeah. Well, mission control is kind of customizable. Which, you, you have a question too, Kelly? What's up? Ooh, force quit notifications. That's a good question. Okay, so this is how we, I'll get to your question in just a second. So this is mission control and how we can set it up to do what we want it to do. What it looks like is a two finger swipe on your trackpad or your magic mouse. I don't have a whole lot on it because I use it by accident. Okay, now for notifications. In your system preferences, there is a preference for notifications. And you can tell it do not disturb, which means that from 4 p.m. to 7 a.m., your notifications are all turned off. You can set your notifications for your calendars, all of its customizable right in here. So say I want to turn off my Facebook notifications, this is where I would go. It did not work. Kelly, do you want to share your screen with me and we'll see if we can make it work? You had to shut down and restart. Did it work after you restarted? Hi, Patty. Yes, this is also how you turn the notifications on. It kind of works. Uh, Kelly, what notifications are, uh, are you getting that you need turned off? No, Patty, you're just fine. 
you're trying to download CS6 and it said to shut down Safari notifications. Are you sure it didn't say just shut down Safari? Hmm. Well, if we turn off the Safari notifications, it should be none. Um, that should be how you set it. I'll show it to you again, Maggie, in just a second. Kelly, you're growling. Do you want me to stop sharing so you can share? Talk to me, Kelly. I don't know if I did it right. Your notifications? Yes. Okay, well, I'm going to stop my sharing and you share your screen with me. And Patty, uh, you should be getting phone support on a school computer. Okay, so open your preferences up, Kelly. Who said you had to pay $29, Patty? Are we talking about Apple Care? Okay, there is a special student number for Apple support and you have to go through the IT guys here at the school in order to get that number. They should not be charging you for that because it is registered to the school. Okay, if Trent won't give it to you, see Scott or Aaron. And you may have to ask Trent directly for it. Okay. But no, you should not be having to pay for Apple Care the entire time you're in school. Aaron is cool. We all like Aaron. He's trainable. He's willing to learn about Max. Okay, so Kelly. Uh, click on the notifications button and Maggie this is also where you're going to find your notifications it's in the system preferences and you're going to Kelly you're going to click on the Safari on the left side okay and you're going to tell it none and you can turn off show notifications on lock screen and you can turn off the badge app icon and turn off play sound for notifications. If you don't have any notifications, the five most recent items should not be showing up anyway. Okay. So that should fix that issue. Okay. How do I go about restarting the download for my Adobe? For the CS6? Yeah, or can we do that after class? Uh, let's talk about that after class because I don't have access to the CS6 and I'm going to have to see who does. I'm okay. Gonna I'm going to have to send off a couple of messages. Uh, okay, Kelly, can you go back to the system preferences page? Hit the little pa square patches. There you go. Do you see it now, Maggie? Okay, if you're using uh, Mavericks versus Yosemite, there's gonna be a little bit of a difference. 
So who's using Mavericks and who's using Yosemite? Yeah, Kelly, you have Yosemite. I have Yosemite. Tam Tamara's got Yosemite. Eric, Yosemite is the latest and greatest upgrade of operating system software for uh, Mac operating systems. And Maggie, would you like to see how to check what your uh, operating system is? Okay, so Kelly, if you could stop sharing your screen, I will share mine again. Okay, now over here you have your little apple. And you have to go to About This Mac. And it's going to bring up the menu. And here is where it tells you what your operating system is. So I have Yosemite. And yes, someday I will get to see Yosemite National Park. It'll be great. Car sick and all. But I am on version 10.10.2. So if you are at 10.8 or lower, you are probably in Mavericks and you might need to upgrade to Yosemite. We did cover a little bit of this last week. Um, it's found in the App Store. Yeah, you're in Mavericks and haven't had the system update in quite a while. That's why you're not seeing some of the notifications and some of the cool toys that uh, you see Kelly and on my screen. Uh, it's not a rut row. Well, you'd, I would wait a little bit because it does take a while to download, Maggie. It is a free download, like Kelly says. And um, there is a, uh, a Java legacy download that you're going to have to have in order to make your Adobe programs work correctly. I do have a link for that. And it happens to be right here. So all you have to do is basically go to uh, the Apple Store and search for that Java SE Legacy or Java for OSX 2014. But I'm going to copy and paste it into the chat box for you guys if you want to uh, use it. And you have to install this after you install Yosemite. You can't do it before. This is a support link, OK? Any questions on that one? <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> so, are we, everybody's going to go to the App Store and find Yosemite. Yeah, you just, Eric, you just go to the App Store and you, uh, let me open up my App Store and I'll show you. We are so lucky that I am on a huge iMac because Zoom would normally not, not, not let me have this many things open at one time. So you can either search for your Yosemite here. Or in the features panel, it's the very top one in the all categories here on the right. And when you click on it, it'll just take, take you to this beautiful screen. You'll get all new backdrop papers that look like Yosemite National Park. Um, if you haven't downloaded Yosemite yet, it won't be in your updates, Kelly. It, it, it only works if you have already downloaded Yosemite. You already had a version of it. They're in a little bit older version, so they're going to have to update this. Yeah, that's OK. They got to update this before they can do any more updates. And there will probably be quite a few updates. So my recommendation is to. Uh, Wait until you have your homework turned in and do this on Sunday morning. 
I know it's Easter weekend, but you can turn it on, let it download, and let it go and have Easter dinner. Sound like a plan? Go hunt some Easter eggs. Run over the Easter bunny. Okay. <laughs> Wonder if I could make my 16 year old dress up as the Easter Bunny this weekend. Kill the bunny, kill the bunny, Patty. You're funny, Patty. <laughs> Kelly says, Oh my gosh, no. And Tamara's laughing. Okay, so apart from having Easter Bunny, <laughs> Easter Bunny issues. <laughs> At least we're not watching the movie hop. I haven't been able to eat jelly beans since. <laughs> okay, so back to the App Store in Yosemite. If you, when you upgrade, all the nifty new things that show up should be in there. If you like your jelly beans, Maggie, don't watch hop. I will take the snowman over hop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough with jelly beads and on back onto my PowerPoint. So we've gone over system preferences. Did anybody see anything in the system preferences that they had a question about or wanted to know more about? Kelly says, nope. Tamisha is a no, Patty's a no. Maggie wants to see the trackpad. Well, I don't have a trackpad. We're gonna get to the time machine, Kelly, I promise. And Maggie, I'm guessing you're wanting to know about that right click versus the two finger click you have to do on the trackpad now. No? You don't need to know about right click versus two finger click. Kelly, I know you've got the right click. Okay, when you zoom in and out on your trackpad, I'm gonna click on my mouse because it lets me do some of that too. Um, it's a um, squeeze it in, it's a pinch motion. I'm doing this, I, I have two of these mice and they are absolutely wonderful. So it's just kind of a pinching movement. It's a pinch and spread. They are expensive mice, Eric, but thankfully one came with my, with my iMac and the other one my husband bought me for a present, so. Okay, if your gestures aren't set up on your trackpad just right, um, it will ha it will have issues doing it, but there is a work around it without using the trackpad. Your command plus and minus short key shortcut keys they will zoom your screen in and out. So if I do a command plus, I don't want Google. So if I do a command plus here, it enlarges it. If I do a command minus, it shrinks it. And if I've made it so small, I can't figure out what I'm doing, I just do a command zero and it brings it back. And this works in Firefox, Google, and Safari. I love my shortcuts too. I love them, Maggie, they're great. You're welcome. And I, I spout shortcuts off all the time. Kelly can attest to me saying, Command Z, Command Z all the time. I think Patty can too. <laughs> shortcuts are time savers. Time savers make you money. Yes, Patty, you do have cheat sheets. I think I sent them to you last week. Now, if you would just memorize what's on them. Maggie, if you want to email me at tara.cowles 
at independence.edu, I will email them. Patty, I think maybe we need to tape them on the wall in front of your computer instead of having them in a notebook. <laughs> No, I'm serious. I have mine pasted up on the walls in order to learn them in those sticky notes. We talked about stickies last week and how useful they are for putting in those shortcut keys. They're fantastic. Well, then we're, you're going to learn to make friends with the sticky notes. Stickies are great. Yes, Tamara, very useful. Yeah, I, I had to figure out how to get them onto my PC at work, too. So, yeah, the stickies are wonderful. They're movable post-it notes that don't leave your computer. I turn mine all kinds of colors. Okay, so back to the PowerPoint. And we are on system preferences still. So we've got... Uh, extensions. Today I have Dropbox, Finder, iTunes. Those are the main ones I work with. And then, let's see, I've got dual monitor displays. Oh, Tamara, your first laptop. How are you dealing with it? Is it your first computer? Yes, Patty, Safari is, is kind of gray and yucky and you can't customize it like you can Firefox and Google like we did last week. Oh, Tamara, so you're learning Macs and not PCs for the very first time. Is that correct? Oh, you are one lucky duck. I love my Max. Yes, Anthony, practice makes perfect. It's just like with all the programs that you're gonna be learning in the graphic design program. It's like a musical instrument. You don't get perfect overnight. Patty, I keep telling you, you are not allowed to throw it out the window. There are no sledgehammers allowed near the Max either. I kept my husband from throwing his MacBook Pro across the room. I have saved it many times, and now he hates his, hates his PC, so. And he's almost 67 years old. Yeah, there's almost a 30-year jaw, jaw-dropping age difference there, Tamara. <laughs> But I promise you will learn to love your Macs. They are great pieces of equipment and they will follow you. Uh, my MacBook Pro has lasted almost six years now without a problem. I did have to have a hard drive replaced that the school took care of. Patty, did we clean yours out last night or was that Kelly? Okay, Patty, come in and see me Friday morning and we'll clean yours out so it doesn't run so slow. I'll be in the Student Success Center Friday morning. Oh, well, you wanna stay after tonight and we'll go over it? Okay, so we've got, let's see, the general. We haven't covered the general tab. Now, you'll notice that, you might have noticed that my top bars here are reversed. Mine are black and white versus the gray and black. Do you guys see that? Yeah, it's a nifty um, 
set up. For me, it's easier to see. It highlights on the, on the screen I'm using and then it blends into the background on my dual screen that I'm not using. So that information is right here. See, I can change it back and forth. Yeah, I don't like the gray. It, it doesn't pop for me as much, but Patty, maybe if you try that in your system preferences, it's use dark menu bar and dock. You're welcome. That was a nifty trick I found. And in Yosemite, if you have other iCloud devices, such as an iPhone or an iPad, and you click this handy dandy little box down here, you will be able to answer your phone from your Mac if they are on the same Wi-Fi signal. How cool is that? You leave your phone sitting next to the bed, it rings, you're at the other end of the house on the computer, have your earbuds turned on, and you can answer the phone. <laughs> yeah, you just turn the allow hand off. It is very cool. The first time it happened, it took me completely by surprise. I could not figure out why my phone was ringing on my computer screen. But it, it's turned FaceTime into an, a, a connection between your phone. It's also, this handoff also works with your contacts and say you're using an iPad and you're starting a, a Google Doc or you have the, the Microsoft program for iPad. You can hand that document off and start working on it on your Mac. It, Maggie, it, if you have another type of phone, it's not going to work. It only works for the Mac, the Mac operating system. And it's just one of those nifty little things that if you have that, have the multiple uh, devices on Mac operating systems, this is just some of the neat stuff you can do with it. If you don't, don't worry about it. Don't go upgrading it to an iPhone or get an iPad just because you can do something cool with it. That's a trick I pull and convince my husband that we have to have something just because it'll go with my Mac. He's not buying it anymore. I think he's figured me out. Uh, Maggie, you have an iPod Touch. Depending on what generation it is, when you upgrade, it might allow you to do this. then you should be able to use the handoff if it's the new, newest version. And like I said last week, Patty, make sure you get an OtterBox case for the iPhone 6. The cases bounce. The phones do not. Just saying. <laughs> Heather, welcome. I didn't see you sneak in on me. My husband throws his iPhone down the hallway all the time. That's why he's in a, in a military-grade otter box. <laughs> we have the Defender series. <laughs> and camouflage, no less. <laughs> and he wonders why he can never find his phone. Hmm. Okay, so <laughs> back to our general preferences. You can also set your default web browser here. So if you want to keep um, Safari or Google Chrome as your uh, main uh, web browser, this is where you would choose it. Uh, the Flip Player is something I downloaded out of the Mac Store or the App Store. Um, and it allows me to take a Windows media file a WMV file and flip it to an MOV file or an MP4 file for video. Um, it, it's really useful when I take a, a WMV file on my PC at work and I need to play it in a PowerPoint on the Mac at work. 
So I have to have that flip player to get it to translate. Yeah, that just does it for me. It, it was a $5 program that I've gotten a lot of use out of at work. But it's not really a web sur surfer, it's just a, um, a converter for video. Yep, makes it easy, Heather. Oh, I'm all about making life easier. That's why shortcuts are so important. Okay. Any other questions about, uh, oh, we wanted to go over Time Machine and that was here, wasn't it? Who wanted to go over Time Machine? Okay, in order for, uh, so everybody wants to go over Time Machine. So Time Machine is Mac's way of creating your backups. And remember last week when I told you guys how important it was to put tags and file your classes under their name, what type of class they were, and the weeks? So everybody remembers all the organization stuff, right? Organization is key. Okay, so when you go into your time machine, which is up here, because I have my on, and it's an external drive. The bigger the drive, the better. So if I want to enter my time machine, it does this really cool thing. Did you, do you guys, I, I can't see my second screen right now. And I'm almost afraid you guys can't see the whole screen. Okay, so basically what Time Machine does is it creates a date and time period for every file I've created. So I can go all the way back to March 2013 before I graduated, and it goes back to the file dates. Now I can look in my documents file here, and I am pretty sure I'm gonna come up with a school file. And there's my advanced package design and my professional development class. I know that it's got the screen's real screwy. Um, let me see if I can fix that. Hmm. It's not letting me. Okay, did that get any better, guys? Time machine's really kind of funky. Okay, so I'm gonna exit out of this. So I'm gonna hit cancel. But you guys see, did you see the way the timeline works? Okay, so if you know approximately what month you finished a class, you can go back into the time machine and pull all of that up. and restore that class to your, your MacBook. That's one of the reasons organization is so extremely important. I've got a list of every class I took in the order I took it so that I can go back and find those assignments. And when you come up to DES 250 and DES 499 for you bachelor students, that information is gonna be priceless when they say, oh, you're gonna need your native files because we're gonna redo them all and create a portfolio. Yeah, Patty, deleting your previous work, you're gonna end up having to recreate it. And Heather, if that's your next class, you better start collecting that homework now. Because if anything has to be recreated, I would start recreating it now. It would be DES 250. And I think Craig Stokes is still teaching that class. He's been teaching it for about five years now. And you really need to have the native files because design class, it's a design class. Number 250 uh, website, or not website development, but portfolio design. You'll get there, Maggie. You'll get there too, Tamara.
Yeah, Maggie, you will love graphic design one. So if you're taking DES 250 with Craig next mod, Heather, you're going to want to go in and find as many of your original native files as possible and start that soon. Tamisha, what class are you in right now? Designs, you're gonna want the designs, Heather. And Patty, you may have enough work from the bachelor's program or from the associate's program to uh, build a portfolio for $4.99, your capstone. Very good, Eric, I'm glad you're organized. But keeping those native files, and I've been out of school two years now. Yeah, better back them up. And we're going to go over different ways to back them up beside the, besides the uh, time machine. But even two years after I've graduated from school, and as many years as I've got in the field, and we're looking at like seven or eight now pre-school, um, I can go into say my OneDrive here, which is a cloud drive, and I keep all of my portfolio original files available and e easy access. Because I was like some of you guys, and Tamisha, if you're an APP 101, you, you're gonna get there, you save the native files, you've had early warning. Uh, Patty, we'll make time next mod to go through and organize your stuff. I don't have any one-on-one -on -one hours this mod, but it'll be a work in progress. But for some of you who are just starting in the graphic design pro progress or program, organization is key, and keeping all of those native files and the uh, pieces that go with it, it's essential. Because if I wanted to say I've got a Facebook logo and it's part of one of my ads, if I don't have that logo in the file, it, will, it won't find it. It'll show up as a blank square sometimes. Get with me next mod, Heather, and we'll, and we'll make some appointments to do some organization. Oh, Maggie, you're in my APP 101 classes. I love you guys. Yes, Anthony, organiza organization is key. You guys have to email me next mod, okay? I will be teaching solo next mod, so we'll see what's going on. We're going to have lots of fun. It'll be great. I have no idea what I'm teaching next mod, but it's going to be fun. Of course, we're also going to continue with the uh, intro to Mac classes. So if you haven't caught it all or you've come up with something you need to know, you guys let me know and we'll cover it. We're going to have fun, aren't we, Patty? Yeah, okay. Okay, so back to the PowerPoint. We're never going to get anywhere. Look at this. It's almost 7 o'clock. And you guys wanted me to do a little bit of um, um, Illustrator again. Okay, so we went over the browsers, the adware, the malware, and the antivirus. So if you need those, go watch next or last week's lecture. And security, security, security. You always need a password, right? Everybody needs a password. Do not, under any circumstances, put your passwords on the sticky notes. You do share your computer, share your screens in the stu student success center, so don't put your, your sticky no passwords on your sticky notes. <laughs> it's okay to have your phone number if you want people to call you. But don't put your passwords on there, especially if it's the password to your bank account. No, 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 no. Bad.
Patty, even creating a second account for him, you're still going to have to be very careful and make sure everything gets scanned for antivirus and anti-malware. Bye, Heather. You have a good night. So passwords, very, very important. OK. So does anybody need a refresher on cleaning their browser history? Patty says, nope. Everybody's saying, bye-bye, Heather. Maggie says, not today. Oh, you did that today. OK, good. OK. Um, we went over antivirus software last week. My favorite is AVG. But can anybody tell me what the best defense for antivirus is? What is your very best defense? Not installing MacKeeper. That's a good one, Anthony. Good. OK. The best defense is if you know Norton doesn't work with Max, Maggie. AVG has a really good free one. The best defense, abstinence, yeah. Kind of like the only way to prevent absolute pregnancy is, no, is abstinence. OK, back to best defense with Mac. If you're unsure, do not click on it. I haven't used Norton on a Mac, Maggie. I've had bad experiences in the past with Norton and McAfee interfering with programs, so I just stick with AVG because it's free. Yes, if it's flashing and it has pretty colors on it, it's probably not a really good idea to click on it. What's another good de defense? This is my, my favorite defense of all. Any, any guesses? Keep the teenagers off the Mac. <laughs> yes. You think it's funny, Patty. <laughs> I have two plus nine grandkids from my husband, so. Yes, passwords are, yeah, passwords, duct tape, anything to keep them off of my computer. Uh, our autistic eight-year-olds, Maggie, I have a 16-year-old Asperger syndrome kid. So, um, yes, Eric, cats do the same thing. I have mine Skyping other instructors occasionally because she walked across the keyboard. <laughs> So if you guys receive a random Skype from me that looks like nonsense, it's probably Ollie Marie. And as cute as she is, her typing is horrible. Four-legged secretary. OK, anti-malware. Again, if you're not sure what it is, don't open it. If it comes in your email and it's not from somebody you were expecting an attachment from or you don't know them, don't open it. It's just precaution. If it says it's from your bank and they want you to open something and you're not expecting it, don't open it. Patty, you want to come up to Wyoming and teach this to um, some of my pilots in Civil Air Patrol? They do not like to listen to me when I say do not open things if you don't know what they are. I'm the wing director of IT and they don't believe me. <laughs> And yes, Maggie, Facebook will give you a lot of viruses if you're not careful. Okay, who remembers what Spotlight is? Yes, it is search. Oh, Maggie, since you mentioned Child Blocker, um, this handoff thing for the Mac and the iPhone, it lets me... Uh, keep track of my daughter's text messages because it's connected to my iTunes account. So all of her text messages show up directly on my computer screen. Funny thing is, she didn't know about it. <laughs> I know exactly where she's at and who she's talking to. 
I wonder I was not going to be nice about this phone. <laughs> Okay, so everybody remembers file management and organization. Yes, Finder is our friend. It's like my computer in a PC. Finder finds things for you. My computer on a PC loses things for you. Well, Patty, the only time it won't find it for you is if you've deleted it or you named it Un untitled, or you didn't spell it correctly, you're right. <laughs> but even if you get the first three or four letters, it, it, some of the files will come up. Okay, we remember the doc. We learned how to quit everything. We learned how to do a force quit. Um, did we go over pinning things to the doc? Does everybody know how to do that? Okay, Tamisha, if you say right click on an application in your doc and you go to options, you can tell it to keep in doc. I figured it out by mistake too, Maggie. Ooh, right click. Yeah. Right, that's that two finger click or right click. It, it's a personal preference of how you set it up. And you'll notice down here it says um, assign to. That's because I have dual monitor displays on my setup at home, on my home office. My traveling office, no, no extra displays. Your printer will not speak to your Mac, Patty. How old is your printer? It's almost a year. And has it had any software updates come through on your Mac? Hmm. Is it hardwired into your computer or is it a Wi-Fi? USB, so it's hardwired. And it's still not recognizing it. Does it have Wi-Fi capability on it? Why don't you try setting up the Wi-Fi on it and see if that will help. I just got a brand new, it didn't, didn't work. Hmm. What brand of printer is it? An HP. I just got a brand new Epson. So let me do some research on HP printers. If you can email me the model number, I'll do some research and send you back some links and see if we can get it up and running for you. Well, if you tell me now, I won't remember. You have to email me. Maybe Kelly can help you get it set up. <laughs> you and Kelly have the same printer. Maybe the two of you together can figure it out. And I can interpret geekies if you need it. Patty, no throwing it out the window. You're going to make friends with your Mac. Okay. Okay, so we've talked about using system utilities. So did I go over disk utilities with you guys last week and how to... Oh, we didn't, did we? Okay, so disk utility, uh, and who was it? Patty. Patty, you needed to clean up your Mac, correct? And Kelly, you came in to see me about this last night, and we cleaned up all your libraries and everything. So 
This is another thing I want you guys to do. This is the equivalent of defragmenting the drive on a PC. How many know what that is? Okay. Eric does, Patty does. Tamisha's no idea, that's okay. Maggie does. Tamara says a what? Kelly says they is no fun. <laughs> okay, so really this is a lot easier than defragmenting a PC. And Tamara, defragmenting just means uh, on a PC when you delete something or install something, it leaves gaps in the hard drive space. And so when you defragment it, it closes up those empty spaces and makes the cleans it up and makes it go faster like Maggie said. That's the simple way to put it. So to clean up your hard drive, yeah, we're just gonna clean it up. And all this really does is if there's any programming errors that are different on your machine versus what Apple has published, be it either from a malware removal, your computer has been forced, shut, forced down, forced to turn off one too many times, um, teenager deleted your Adobe Creative Suite and you had to put it back on. This is something you should do. So what you do is you go into your applications folder and you go down here to the utilities folder. And it's gonna be under disk utility. Now I already have it open. So when you come in here, you'll see all the hard drives that are, I have to slow down, Kelly? You want my Skype information? <laughs> yes, my Skype information. You can find me at 392, oh, sorry, 307, 392-4128. You can find me on Skype that way. Okay, so no problem, Maggie. I'm going to, as soon as this is done, we're done tonight, I will post the recording. <laughs> It'll be in the design club and in the APP 101 classes as soon as I am done. Or as soon as it's done rendering. Okay, Maggie, goodbye. Okay, so back to our map. You're gonna go to your applications folder and mine I keep pinned to my dock just because I'm special that way. And it's in your utilities folder. Everybody with me so far? Okay, so in the utilities folder, it's called disk utility. And you're gonna recognize it because it's the doctor for your hard drive and it's got a stethoscope attached to it. Everybody see the little stethoscope? Okay, so I have it open and you'll see I've got uh, at least three hard drives here, right? If you have an external hard drive on there, you're gonna see it. And you can do the disk re permission repair on it, on those two. But the one we're gonna focus on is the one that says Macintosh HD. Patty, it's tax time. They're probably on sale at Walmart. Newegg.com has a few of them, too, a few really good ones too. One is my iTunes library and one is my backup. Amazon, Eric's right, Amazon has some. You wanted the cheat sheet, I'll put it all in there, just remind me. Okay, so Mac HD, and we're just gonna click on that. We're gonna make sure first eight is click, clicked, because these three here, 
should not be touched unless you're on the phone with Apple Care. It's okay, Patty. But do you see under the chat where it says save chat? In the chat bar? In the chat screen? If you click that button and save it, the whole transcription of everything everybody typed in tonight will be saved in your Zoom folder. It's like taking notes without actually having to type. So wait till the end of the class before you do that. Yes, Kelly. You have two Mac drives. Are they stacked like this? Okay, so you're gonna take the one that's underneath it, the one that's, see I have one that's one terabyte Apple HD. It's the same drive. It's just kind of a sub drive within the drive. So you want the one that's underneath. Okay, and then we're just gonna click repair disk permissions. Now, depending on how big your hard drive is, this might take a while. Depending on how many permissions need to be repaired, it might take a while. Sometimes it only takes a couple seconds, and sometimes it could take all night. I'm afraid to even guess how long it's going to take after removing a Trojan from this thing this morning. Any questions? See, it's got a warning, has been modified and will not be repaired. Mine will tell me how long, it, how long it's been running and then it'll give me an estimate. So this SUID file was probably something that was infected. Yeah, Patty, it'd be a good idea to do it afterward and then come in and see me I'll be in Saturday night from 8 to midnight in the Success Center, and uh, I'll show you, we'll clean out your libraries. Yeah, you got that same warning too, Kelly, huh? Thanks, Patty. Yeah, so my group differs. They changed it. They'll fix it. So it'll take a little bit. See, now it's going to refresh my, repaired my printers. It's going to repair all kinds of things. Now, I know we talked last week about screenshots. Shift Command 3 to do the whole thing and Shift Command 4 to do a selection, right? Okay, this, it, this grab does the same thing. It's the long way to the shortcut. And the keychain access is grab downloaded. It's part of your operating system. It's in that system utilities folder. Kelly, there's no dumb questions. The only dumb question is the question left unasked. So keychain access, I kind of sort of have mine set up, but it's kind of like storing all your passwords on one ring, like, like you keep your keys. When your screenshot doesn't save to your desktop, where does it go? Kelly, did it ever show up in your pictures, in your picture file? And it didn't show up in your desktop, and you don't have Dropbox, do you? Well, let's take a look at this uh, wonderful program called Grab. 
and see what happens. So here's the, it's got its own set of shortcuts. And preferences. Enable sound. Pointer type. That's all the preferences. Okay, so we'll do a selection. Drag over the portion. Okay, so this is out of grab. Made a snippy little sound and gave me that. So then I can go to file and save it. They are nowhere. Hmm. Kelly, you were just bound and determined to ask hard questions. Would you like to share your screen with me? And maybe we can see you take a screenshot. Okay. Yes, you are a learning experience. But you're a great one. Okay, go ahead and share your screen with me. And let's see. There we go. There's Kelly. Okay. So. Okay, you seen me take that screenshot last night. I don't think the pipe will. Of the cooler. Take out the grease. Yes. Here's Do my desktop. Give me a second and I'll find it. Grease on cream colored paint. Here's my desktop. Okay. Do a screenshot for me now of just your desktop. That, um, I got some stuff that I think it's called Read Down or something like that that's supposed to take the. Okay. So it does show now, up on your. Now it appears. Okay. Now go to a website and take a screenshot there. Because on. it didn't appear last night. On that, that, uh, I took some tar out of the shirt. With it. But I don't know. If Do you remember last night if we heard the camera click sound? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so let's minimize that. See, and it. I've looked everywhere for that picture I did the screenshot of last night. Hmm. I'm going to send you a request for remote control. Oh, no. I hope I hit approve. Okay. So in yesterday... I don't know how to hide my chat. Are we st Okay. Here, let me just do this. Would that work to take the... Um, I just want to see yesterday. This, um, carpet here, Kelly's. Okay, so I just makes. Well, that's too much effort. So they brought mud and stuff in here on this one and that is very weird that it didn't do it. I've noticed on some that I've had to take a screenshot on more than more than once because the computer just didn't grab it. See, there's no screenshots there. I have no idea where it could have gone. Told you I'm a learning experience. You are. I think it's going to take some practice. I agree. 
I just need to find out where they go when they don't go on my desktop. <laughs> if they're not on your desktop, then they probably haven't taken. Okay, so I need to go back and do those again? Yeah. Okay. Because you're set up just fine to be running the way they are, where you're supposed to be, so. She could, but if it's not showing up on yesterday's and how she um, has everything organized and the layout that she had her files, it's not going to show up because it's not going to be there. So who knows what migration assistant is? Probably yeah, it's default is set to save to the de desktop, Anthony. Migration assistant. For those of you who are ever looking to get a big iMac for your desktop and eventually outgrow your MacBook Pros, the migration assistant will move all of your files, not your programs, to your new computer. I recommend hardwiring this in, not doing it over the Wi-Fi because it will take days. So you can, uh, I did mine with a standard uh, Ethernet cable and there are lightning cables you can do it with. The Mac has all kinds of options but Wi-Fi will take days. Okay, what have we got next? We're, done, we're doing disk repair permissions. We've talked about iCloud last week. Then looky there, I, my repair disk permissions was not that bad. Hmm, how about that? Okay, so we're gonna skip iCloud. Who has Google Drive? Good job, Anthony. Tamisha does. Kelly Parker says, what? Patty says, I think. Anthony says, greatest invention ever. And Kelly says, I don't know. Okay, who has a Gmail account? Okay, Kelly. Okay. Google Drive comes with your Gmail account. It works really, really well in Chrome. Okay, yes, you see my Doctor Who stuff. So I need to actually sign in to my why well, I'm not signed in. Uh, Yay, I remembered my passwords. Okay, so we are going to go. And open up my home page. Okay, so if you're really lucky, you have this nine patch square. Yeah, Patty, don't talk to me about spreadsheets. I got hundreds of questions I have to go discussion posts I have to go respond to and haven't even started yet <laughs> okay so if you click on the nine patch in Google Drive or in in Google Chrome it brings up this menu here and Google Drive gives you 15 gigabytes of hard drive space to store your files in So, if I were to download Google Drive, exactly, Patty, exactly, store your school files here. I have everything from school files to client files, Civil Air Patrol, Roller Derby, you name it, and it's on here in some way, shape, or form. Okay, so you can just do a Google search for down, Google Drive download. And what it does is it installs it on your computer. 
So everything that is on this website here is also synced to my MacBook and to my iMac. So no matter where I'm at, I have access to my files because they're up there floating around in space. Pretty cool, huh? The best part about this is if the file has a little person on it, that means it's shared with somebody. So they also have this on there. No, it doesn't, Patty, it doesn't really free up space on the Mac because these files are also stored on your Mac, but they are also backed up up there in the cloud. I wish it just freed up space. However, if you're like me and have more than one Gmail account that doesn't sync with your Mac, you have to download them and upload them manually. Yeah. So if you have two Tamra, that means you've got a potential to store 30 gigs of files on Google Drive in two separate accounts, 15 gigs each. But in order to access one, you have to do it either on the computer or you have to do it by hand, upload them manually. And that would just be going to new and do a file upload. Make sense? Okay. Now also in Google Drive, should you ever find yourself needing to do a discussion post without Microsoft Word, heaven forbid that should ever happen, you can go to Google Docs. And that's here under the new folder. You can go to Google Docs. It's the same thing as a Word document. Google Sheets, it's the same thing as, as Excel. And Google Slides, it's the same thing as a PowerPoint. So if you're ever at, at the point where you're having to do your homework at the library because your Mac has been shipped off at, and you can't access your Microsoft Word to do your discussion post or do your paper, you can still access it and do it in Google Docs. And then download it once you get your PC or your Mac back. It's a great tool. But again, remember your passwords. Any questions on that? Okay, now who's heard of Dropbox? And Kelly has a question. Kelly, what's your question? Okay, Patty's got Dropbox and we're waiting for Kelly's question. How do you delete stuff off the Google Drive? If it is connected to your computer and you have a Google Drive folder, this is the bad part about sharing with people. You can select it out of this folder and put it in the trash and delete it. It will resync and it will be gone from here. You can also delete things from here by just clicking on the trash can. Does that make sense, Kelly? Okay, so you, 
are you online or in your folder? You're online. Okay, you click on the picture and you click on the trash can. Well, Patty, if Scooby is hyperactive tonight, he needs a Scooby treat or a Scooby snack. Goldfish needs Scooby snacks too. Just not as big as one as, as Scooby Doo gets. Okay, Kelly, is that working for you? Didn't work. Do you want to share with me again? Okay. Okay, share your screen with me. It's okay, Kelly, they're learning by watching. Okay, so uh, can you minimize your Zoom board? Okay. Just click the gold button and Zoom. Okay. So click on the folder and click on the trash can. Okay, wrong trash can. Okay, so click on the, the picture again. And the trash can on the upper right. Yes, that one. Now it'll be in this trash can down here. Okay, your server's having an issue, so try refreshing your screen. Okay, now click on it, click the trash can. Okay, now this trash can over here, you should be able to click on it, it will be in there, and then under the trash, see where it says trash at the top? Click that, say empty trash. There you go. I'd demonstrate that a little more, but if I deleted Busset Law Firm, my sister would shoot me. You're welcome, Kelly. Everything in here I keep for, um, it, it has a purpose because it's on there. I can't, most of the stuff I can't go delete without asking somebody else's permission. Clients, you gotta love them. Okay, so back to our PowerPoint. So we were on to Dropbox. You can get to, you're welcome, I'm glad you figured it out. So Dropbox, you can sign up for a Dropbox account at dropbox.com. It is basically the same thing as the Google Drive. However, you'll see that my Dropbox icon up here has a little X in it. That's because it's full. And if I go to my settings, it'll tell me I've used 101.4% of my two and a half gigabytes. Now you tell me, two and a half gigabytes versus 15. Which is a better deal? Exactly, Patty. Google is a better deal. However, Dropbox does have some things that um, Google will let you do, won't let you do. So I could upload my uh, Zoom videos to my Dropbox and post the link to Dropbox and you guys would be able to download the file. It's a pretty cool feature. Is it worth the expense for what they charge? I'm not all that sure. 
I guess it would kind of depend on how much money you were making off of it. Hmm. Kelly, if you have this icon in your applications folder, you have Dropbox. You can also use your spotlight search to see if you have it. Otherwise, you can go download it. I use it for photography clients. And if I were to open my Dropbox folder today, that's my OneDrive. Where's my Dropbox? You would see pictures from my last roller derby bout. And you can see your poor brand new instructor on her roller skate skating the wrong direction. But our, our team photographer, he sent me all the pictures and this is how the fastest way to get them. And who doesn't like watching girls fly on roller skates? So this is basically what Dropbox is for, is for, uh, <laughs> Patty, you don't like watching girls fly on roller skates? Oh, but it's so much fun. Okay, Kelly, if you want to download it, you can go to dropbox.com and sign up for an account. I was going to show you a picture if I can find it. That's why I'm the referee. <laughs> I get to send people to the penalty box. And if you see a set of white fangs on a helmet, that's me. <laughs> yep, there I am in the, in the background, watching people beat each other up. There we go. See, referees are much safer. We get to do a lot of standing around. <laughs> uh, I don't do rollerblades anymore. Rollerblades are dangerous. So we're going to exit our full screen. But that's basically what Dropbox is for, is for photography. Never say never. I'm almost 40 and I'm skating. Patty, we have had two girls have to have uh, surgery for broken ankles, metal plates, and screws, and they're still skating. Patty, you're, or Kelly, you're already attached to your wheels. You can come rough with us anytime. You have wheels. <laughs> okay, back to our PowerPoint. We went over Time Machine. Now, is anybody interested in running your iTunes library off an external drive? Or is it just me that is fanatical about downloading movies from iTunes? <laughs> You have no clue? Yes, we did go over Time Machine. That's when the screen went all funky. Yes, movies. Movies. Um, 
iTunes has movies, lots and lots of movies. Not free movies. Although you can download some podcasts that are, are TV shows, and I use those for training for Civil Air Patrol for flight and aerospace education. But these movies are legal, and they are cheaper than me going to fighting my way through Walmart for a Blu-ray. And sometimes you do get discounts and, and uh, giveaways. Yeah, Mockingjay. It's, it's, I haven't seen it yet because I'm waiting for part two. I've read all the books. I want to watch all the movies at once. I'll have to look into Appy Mall on Facebook, Kelly. But um, I, I have a thing for superheroes, so uh, every ooh, Whip It, Whip It's a good movie. So I, because each one of these movies, if you look it up in your finder, is over a gig of hard drive space, I run mine off of an external drive. And it takes up a lot less space. Well, on your heart, on your physical hard drive versus your external. It also means you can take your external hard drive to another computer and watch it from there. So any questions? Okay. So we've got about 30 minutes left. And I think we're going to save quick time for next week. Do I want to build a snowman? No, Kelly, I do not want to build a snowman because it is actually snowing outside. Yeah, it is right, Kelly. I was not happy. Because I wore a short sleeve shirt and a windbreaker to work today and now it's snowing. Okay, so GarageBand. Who knows what GarageBand is? We're going to get the, into this one a little week, a little bit early. Oh, GarageBand lets you create and play Mac, uh, do voice recordings. So, say you're, you know, you have a fight with a significant other or a teenager and you want them to remember it for the rest of eternity. You can record it. Yes, if, if your husband can sing, this would be a good program to use. Now what I have loaded up here is one of my uh, teammates grandson. His name is Ryder, and he's two. And who knows what a two-year-old giggling sounds like? It's the best sound in the whole world. <laughs> so I was tickling him while we were waiting for the Christmas parade to start, and I recorded it. Can you guys hear that? Now the cool part about this is that she has an iPhone and I recorded the sound of him giggling and turned it into a ringtone for her. So when I set up a new file, all I did was I created a new one and it allows me to choose what I want. Do I want a ringtone? 
And this would be where uh, you would do a voice recording for a song. Uh, you could be in songwriter mode. Uh, you have electronic uh, instruments, the different amps, you got the hip hop stuff and different keyboards. You've also got learn to play because you can do intro to guitar and chord trainer, learn how to read the music that they're trying to make me learn to re re sight read. And you can actually go purchase lessons. Not something I really do, but I'm not sure how I would combine piano lessons with graphic design, but hey, it'd be fun. You want to hear the giggles? Let me see if I can hear, get the giggles to come up. So I choose a ringtone. And because Writer was added to my iTunes library, I can go down here and see if I can find him again. Maybe if I type in Writer. There he is. So I can just drag him over there. Theoretically, I can drag him over here. Why am I not dragging him over here? Did you hear it that time, Kelly? He's a cute little guy. He puts up with me tickling him. His grandma has that ringtone every time her daughter texts her. <laughs> so if I wanted to take um, a piece of music or a soundtrack, recently added, do I have anything in my recently added? Well, let's clear off my search engine. Okay. So I can take a song of any kind and say I want my ringtone to be about six seconds long. I find the piece of the song that I want And then I can do a command T to split the track. Can you take any song and make a ringtone? Yes. Is it legal to take any song and make a ringtone? Correct, Kelly, it is not. Can you sell those ringtones? Correct, you cannot sell those ringtones. So you would have to apply for permissions, talk to the artist, talk to the, uh, the publishers to be able to do that. Is it impossible? Depends on the artist. But this is how I edit and create the sermons every week that pastor records and I put them up on the website for everybody who travels in the wintertime so they can still go to church on Sunday, even if they're getting the lesson on Wednesday. GarageBand lets me do that. Now, is it legal for me to use her recordings? Yes, no, I don't know.
Yes, I can with permission. In fact, I don't really have her permission. I was told you will record these and put these on the website. So <laughs> I contact her uh, if you're wanting Jody Messina's uh, My Give a Damn is Busted song and you want to turn it into a ringtone, you can either purchase it or you can write her record company and see if you can get permission. If you pull the student card, you might have better luck. Not always, but sometimes. It's always worth a shot. It never hurts to ask. There might be a little emotional letdown, but it's not physically painful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there any questions about GarageBand? Uh, Patty, uh, your academic advisor, student services, or your AD for the student IDs. Okay, so I had questions last week saying, can we learn something new in Illustrator? Does anybody still want to do that? We got 20 minutes left. Kelly says, yes. Patty says, sure. Tamara says, yay. <laughs> okay, let me quit GarageBand. And I don't want to save that. And I actually have it pulled up. So who remembers the help menu from last week? That opens up when you open up Illustrator if you have it set up right. You guys remember that? Looks like this when you come up. Yours didn't work right, Kelly. Hmm. Well, there's this one called Join and Trim Paths. So I've got it uploaded, and it's this new tool. And we're actually going to zoom in on this area right here. See how the line doesn't connect? Okay, so we have this tool over here under the pencil tool and it's called a join tool. And we're gonna make a scribbling motion just like this. And it should fill in the hole. I know, isn't it cool? Now we've done here, we've got two overlapping strokes, two overlapping strokes. We can take the same thing and make a nice sharp point. I haven't tried it on this piece. See, if I try it on that piece, it takes this line away. So I've lost part of my umbrella. But we can sit here and, and do scribbling motions on the line work to fix them. And these tutorials are available with your cloud. And they just clean up so nice. Can you imagine trying to take the pen tool and connect those? You're getting it, Patty, you're getting it, I promise. The, the pen tool has, has its uses, I will give it that. But the updates they've made to it in the cloud, they're a lot of fun. So let's see here. Now I could try and connect these pieces. 
Let's see what happens if I do here. Not too shabby. What do you guys think? It's a nifty tool. Now if I go over here and I unlock the background, I can go in here. Hmm. Might have to be selected on the layer for that. Okay, so there's our layer for that particular line. So I'm going to select here and I'm going to get that join path tool and I'm going to color in some of my raindrops. But it's not letting me. And I guess, can you tell me why it, that didn't work? No idea, Patty says. No clue, says Kelly. What about you, Scott or Anthony? Any ideas? Tamisha and Tamara, uh-uh, and question marks. Okay. You're right, Eric. It is the setting of the line. They're dotted lines. There's no stroke to fill in because it is a stroke. So if I wanted to change these, I would have to go into the stroke panel, show my options, and turn off the dashed line. And then I have a straight filled line. But if I wanted to take these two here, Hmm, maybe a different one. Maybe it's because they're grouped we can fix that. Ungroup. Okay. Still not letting us do it. I wonder if it's because they're not the pen tool, but I do know that you can't color in a stroked path or a dashed path. Just won't let you do it. But if we take this really cool pen tool and turn off the dashed line, And it's not a closed shape. Do we want a closed shape? There we go. When you guys get into advanced illustrator, um, beginning illustrator, any type of illustrator really, and you're trying to draw a character or a background, I know some of you have drawn the, uh, the robot and had trouble coloring it because it didn't connect correctly. This is the new way to fix it. Instead of having to go up to object, path, average, and join path. Now we have a path, join path tool to do it for us. Is that not the coolest thing? No more arguing and inching and trying to. Okay, Kelly wants to know where the Adobe color should be at in the Creative Cloud. Well, I did some research on that today. And I have 
a Creative Cloud account for photography, which means I pay about 10 bucks a month for Photoshop and Lightroom. That's all it gives me from Adobe. The rest of this comes from the school. But if I go under Window and go to Extensions, I can go to the Adobe Exchange. So the Exchange, I am having a little trouble getting it to update, so I need to go into the Adobe Exchange and download the new files for it because it's just not wanting to work. But if I were to go into Photoshop, everything would be working fine because I pay for that subscription. I don't pay for the Illustrator subscription, so it's um, not working the way it should. Right. Yeah, frowny face, Kelly, I agree. But I can get to my Creative Cloud here, and I have my libraries. Eric, Creative Cloud is from Adobe, and it's the update of CS6. The school has worked out a agreement with Adobe for us to get the package deal for 2014 Creative Cloud. And this is what we're working on. If you were in a 100 level class this mod, you will be upgrading next mod. If you're in a 200 or above class this mod, you'll be upgrading anytime this mod. You probably already sent you the information to do it. And there are a lot of really neat things you can do with it. It's a lot of fun. does take practice to get used to some of the new tools like the join path tool and the curvature tool. Yes, Eric, they'll be sending you out an email when it's your turn to upgrade. Uh, and Kelly, I'm thinking part of the problem with the bugs on your end is the fact that everybody's trying to download it at once in the two, three hundred, three and 400 classes. That's why they're trying to do a staggered release because if everybody's trying to download it from the same place at the same time we might be having a little bit of issues make sense kelly that might work <laughs> Does the program to speak instead of type work with the MacBook Pros? Uh, you mean Dragon Patty? Um, yes, you have to contact student services for that. I know if you want to purchase it, it you can get it from Amazon. Computer Fundamentals is, um, Tamara, is the APP 101, and it is the first class you will take a, a, on your road to design. It's all about learning how to use Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, and um, Excel. Patty, you haven't taken computer fundamentals yet? Okay, Tamara, you'll be taking it next month. Patty, you probably took it right after CSS 101. It's usually in your first two or three mods. So you took it in your associate's class, so you, in, in degree, so you won't need it in your bachelor's program. Um, Get a hold of the ADA office, Patty, for the arthritis and see if you can have accommodations for that. Just call the school and ask for the ADA office. 
uh, Emma Weckler, I think is her name. I don't have the number offhand, but if you call the school and ask for Emma Weckler, she should be able to help you. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Emma Weckler. If that is not correct, I will recant and try and find you the correct person. <laughs> but you guys know where to find me. I'm not that hard. I have not heard uh, the school being closed on Good Friday. The tutors are still scheduled tomorrow, so best you can do is call and, and see what happens. At the very least, leave a message. So you have marketing next mod and APP 101, Tamara. Marketing is a business class. You'll need it for design. Um, Well, thank you, Patty. I'll pass that on to Christy. Uh, Tamara, uh, Carly Phillips is an excellent, excellent uh, graphic arts and marketing tutor or learning coach. She has a degree in both in business and in graphic design, so she's an excellent resource. And her husband, Simon, is the one that's redoing the Shark website for us. So he's put a lot of work into it to make it easier to navigate. Yes, Simon is cool too. Well, Patty, I'm not sure I really like Owl either, but it's necessary for APA. APA and I can say nobody at our school had the programming of Owl Purdue. That was Purdue University. <laughs> I use Citation Manager in Word. Followed both my handy dandy APA spiral bound handbook that I got from Amazon. Well, our time is about up, so are there any questions before I stop the recording? No? Well, thank you, Patty. I try. Even with the lame jokes, I try. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Patty. Okay, we are going to talk about that just as soon as I get off the recording. I'm glad you're enjoying it, Patty. I'm really glad. Good, Tamara. I'm glad. So if you were an AP, APP 101 this mod, I will have this recording up before midnight tonight. And um, I will see if I can get one of the moderators to put it in Design Club 2. I'm glad you came too, Eric. You guys have been great. Okay, Patty, we'll see you next week, and we'll do a brief overview next week for everybody involved, and then we're going to move on to something called iMovie and maybe Photo Booth. Yeah, we're going to do some fun stuff. Photo Booth has some cool stuff. You should try it on the iPad. It does even cooler stuff. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to say good night all and stop the recording. If you have any questions that you need to talk to me after the recording stops, stick around, okay? <laughs>